A magnificent setting, two great teams. What drama here! It's right for Arsenal. Ian Wright yet again. What a shot! What a shot! What a shot. news this week as she receives our latest tennis trophy England's top female player denies there's a crisis in the British game <laughs> there's a terrible injury sustained at the world deck chair folding championships <laughs> and it's revealed that after being let go by Man United neighbours have disclosed that Roy Keane went straight home to unwind With Ian and Rory this week is an England test cricketer who took over 200 wickets and is the only bowler to take a hat-trick against Australia in over 100 years. Not for nothing is he known as the big Yorkshire lad on that puffy dancing show. <laughs> it's Darren Goff! <laughs> With Boris and Jonathan this week is a cross-code rugby legend who scored over 500 tries during his career and won every domestic honour in the game. Not for nothing is he known as the big Hackney lad on that puffy dancing show. <laughs> it's Martin Afire! <laughs> we start the show with the cricketing Tiffy and Rory and Darren. Take a look at this. England's cricketers famously triumphed over the Australians this summer, but according to the fast bowler Nathan Bracken, England's bowlers didn't play fair. So how exactly were they accused of cheating Ian's team? A big welcome to one of the great cricketers of our generation, Darren Goff. <laughs> You're probably Britain's finest exponent of the reverse swing, aren't you? That, that, yeah, that, reverse that, but, swing. But like all true cricket fans, the question we want answered is, are you shagging your Russian dance teacher? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, what's her, I, forget, I forget her name. What's her name? Uh, I've won a rip of knickers off. <laughs> <laughs> Lilia Kopalov. I mean, you really come on as a dancer. When you first came on, I mean, I was watching at home and I thought, wow, he's a bit, I'll be honest, a bit chunky. Right. Oh, chunky. No, no, the word. Yeah, I did think you were a bit word. chunky. Initially, it looked like your partner was trying to move a fridge into a difficult corner. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, you know, when you have to, you have to walk it in, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I have a little flutter, actually. I put, um, well, 20 quid on you, uh, Zoe Ball, a tenner, Colin Jackson, a nine bob note. <laughs> <laughs> I like the show. It's a great show. I love it. Um, you, and they've spun it off because you did Strictly African Dancing, didn't you? Yes, I presented Strictly African Dancing with Natasha Kaplinsky. Okay, I've got a good idea for a yeah. new one. Strictly Lap Dancing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and every week the viewers phone in to remove, vote off an item of clothing. <laughs> <laughs> we've already done a pilot. In half an hour we've got Dennis Taylor down to a thong and a pair of <laughs> Mr. Lettos. <laughs> what do you think of the Aussies? Oh, they're good winners. They're just terrible losers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But they, they just think they should win everything, and when they lose at something, they go home and sulk about it for a month. But they are sort of arrogant, bigoted, outspoken, rude. Oh, you're a Yorkshireman, aren't you? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> exactly the same. But you have a few mates from the Australian team, don't you? Yeah. Shane Warne is a mate of yours. Yeah, good mate of mine. Yeah, he's, yeah. Is he a good, he's a good lad? lad? Very good lad. Likes it. Does he have a texture? He... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we text. <laughs> it's yeah. not quite the same with the Yorkshire accent. Take your bloody knickers off, I will be. <laughs> I'll tell you something, I can't get you enough of it. <laughs> How are England accused of cheating during the Ashes? Can you cheat with the gel in your hair or something? I've heard they put itching powder in the opponent's cricket boxes. That has been Which not. I believe is called ball tampering, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> that has been no. Seriously, how'd you cheat? I know exactly who said it as well, Nathan Bracken. And I think what he mentioned was... Extra strong mints. You, you see, lots know. of cricketers, they're all stood at slip and they're giving it... Why? 
You're kidding. Right. Shining the ball. Shining the ball. No way. Extra strong me. No way. Every <laughs> cricketer I know walks around with one of these. That's got a lips all. Put it on your lips. Take it off. Shine the ball. Are you expecting to bowl tonight, Derek? Okay. Well, I might never. <laughs> That's the right answer. Is it? Yeah. All down oh, to. Boris. Sorry, Boris has one to ask you a question. This new gentleman in front of us uh, to speak a little more in a, a type of English that I would understand. Otherwise, it's very tough for me to interrupt. <laughs> Basically, what I said cricket, cheat, mints, sweeties, shine the ball, swings. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, typical yeah. English attitude, slower and louder, like and lots of hand movements. Yeah. <laughs> It was all down to mints. Nathan Bracken accused the England bowlers of eating them, then using the minty saliva to rub onto the ball and make it swing. The England cricketers claimed it was just sour grapes, which apparently works a lot better than mints. <laughs> Darts players also try a similar technique to improve their performance. They rub Mars bars and bacon rolls in their faces. <laughs> there was a counter-accusation that Shane Warne was rubbing something on his balls. Nurses. <laughs> Boris, Jonathan and Martin, it's a football in Barney for you. Have a look at this. Some of the most memorable moments from previous World Cups, and of course the next one kicks off in Germany Lovely. next summer. But plans for the tournament have caused controversy with some locals. So why exactly Boris's team? The World Cup in Germany. I can't imagine it's going to be a very fashionable affair. I'm, I'm not looking forward to the opening ceremony, because let's face it, you are probably the least stylish men in the world, not you. <laughs> but German oh, men, come on. Very boring. Where else do they sell all those shell suits to? Where else do you see that I many know. mullets? Can you imagine the amount of hairspray that will be above the bloody grounds when they kick it off? It's going to cause a big hole in the ozone layer. I mean, I mean it sounds a little bit like the English. You know, they have a similar dress size. Yes. Oh, fine, what, to the English? Yeah. Nein, das ist incorrect. No. <laughs> we have a strange and perhaps dated view of German in this country. We think of German as being beer lovers, OK? Which we think true. of them liking the umpa music. Correct. Yes. Correct. And doing the, the crazy... Dance, yeah. yeah. May I ask you, Boris, as our representative for Germany, stuff. do you like the beer? Of course. Do you like the umpa music? Mm, only if I'm in Munich. Do you like Lederhosen? Uh, not tonight, but... Uh, Have yeah. you got Lederhosen? I've got Lederhosen. Yeah. Wow, you got Lederhosen? Yeah. What's Lederhosen? It's like what the cheeky girls will wear if they're into leather. It's like very tight shorts oh, really? and a bib. Yeah. Is that right? That's good. Yeah. And do you do the dancing ever? Only if I'm in the mood, you know. I, I think we, we encourage you to do a bit of dancing. Do the dancing. Come on, Come on, let's do it for Boris. Boris. Come on, Boris. Go to Only to find the answer to your freaking question. This could be... Why is he saying freaking now? We've been there for a all night. Please, wait. How does well, it join in? <laughs> oh, do lieber Augustand. Hey, and do you know what? Do you know what's really bizarre? Yeah. It's actually the right answer. The Three what? points. It's to do with the dancing. It's to do with the dancing. <laughs> It's all to do with the opening ceremony. Bavarian dancers have threatened to go on strike because they're insulted by the fact they're only being allocated 45 seconds to perform. Mind you, as any German knows, a lot can happen in 45 seconds. Hey, Boris. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne Rooney was especially disappointed at the news as he'd been looking forward to getting his hands on a few leather-clad slappers. <laughs> Gambling experts predict that the next World Cup is set to be the biggest betting event ever seen in this country as Britons rush to the bookies to put a patriotic pound on England followed by a realistic tenor on Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that round, Ian's team has three points, Boris's team has three yeah. points. Yeah. <laughs> Next up is the double, where sports personalities are matched with things to which they have a connection. Ian's team, your subject is sporting namesakes and your pair are...
Skunky Herd England Willow Wielder, Kevin Peterson. <laughs> and Spiky Herd King of the Courts, Boris Becker. But which one has a sausage named after him? And which one has given his name to a flower? Ian's team. I presume this is a trick question because you want us to associate the sausage with Boris because, Boris. let's face it, Boris is a Looks like a sausage? No, Come no, on. you are a well-known banger. <laughs> You get a big white sausage in Germany as well, don't you? Yeah, a white sausage and a white beer. Yeah. And you get a black sausage and a black beer? No. Are Can you racist no. over there? Goodness. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, white, 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 who is the best cricketer in the country right now, Darren? Apart from you. Not, obviously not you. You're a dancer. Come on. Who's the best cricketer? <laughs> Only one. Freddie Flintoff. Freddie. 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 Big Freddie. Great player. Great Does player. Freddie like a drink, Phil? He likes a drink, Freddie. Does he? Yeah. Most cricketers do like a drink, exactly. to be honest. Yeah. Well, his party trick, he puts three beers in that hand, three beers in that hand, no puts way. them all in at the same time. Impossible. Yeah. I promise you, mate. He, he doesn't spill, a, spill anything. And his other oh, one right. is the and champagne. You know what? That's what makes him a great British champagne <laughs> bottle. <laughs> Champagne bottle, he can just. What? Well, you, you can do a champagne bottle in one. In one. You can do a champagne bottle in one. He can, mate. He can. What? He's an animal. That's, <laughs> animal. that's tough. That's, that's why he's my that's sporting hero. I've he's seen this guy do a champagne bottle. That's one. why he's your sporting hero. <laughs> yeah. He's top draw. I'll tell you, mate. Anybody could do that and then go out and play like he did this summer. Well, <laughs> we even did that before. <laughs> Ian, were you part of that whole Arsenal drinking culture? No. You're supposed to deny that it existed. You're not supposed to deny it was. Well, were you a big drinker in your ugly days? I wasn't a big drinker, but I did try and be a big drinker. And... Let me guess, I bet you a drink, it's got, to be, it's got to be a pint of some sort of exotic beer or maybe a Jack Daniels chaser, would that be a beer? No, you... I just had a black beer. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean like an hour. <laughs> I thought you drank aftershave in rugby players. Did you drink uh, aftershave? No, we don't drink. Uh, yeah, they kind of did it, but I didn't do that. I went home. No. <laughs> That's what we do as brothers. Yeah, so we go home. We, go home. Yeah, we don't swim neither. <laughs> Why do people swim in the sea? It's a silly sharks. thing to do. It's nice. There's not because sharks in the sea over here. Otherwise, would drown. I mean, who better? <laughs> <laughs> You know, coming back from Just Miami, I only see poster. white people in the ocean. Why is that? Because black people ain't stupid, that's why. No. <laughs> I've never seen a black person die in a noose with a shark how many, black in, people in. Do, how many black people do you hear as being taken, taken by a shark? None. How many? You don't hear black people getting taken by a shark. Is because this love thy neighbour? What the...? <laughs> so, so, come on, then. What are the connections between these two? We think that Peterson has had um, a sausage named after him by a Somerset butcher. Yeah. Yeah. And we think that Boris, Boris Becker has had a pump up chrysanthemum named after him. It can't be true. It's the right answer. Oh, you're what? joking. <laughs> Yes, in fact, Kevin Peterson had a pork sausage named after him by a Somerset butcher, Bob Worlock. According to the butcher, it's quite powerful like he is, and spicy. <laughs> and Boris Becker has had a yellow chrysanthemum named in his honour. The flower isn't in bloom at the moment, but by all accounts, it looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> Boris isn't the only tennis player to have a flower named after him. Tim Henman has one called the early exitus disappointius. <laughs> Being immortalised as a sausage is an honour bestowed on very few sporting <laughs> greats. In fact, it's only happened to Kevin Peterson and, more recently, best mate. <laughs> <laughs> Boris, Jonathan and Martin, your subject for the double is sporting injuries and your twosome are... Flamboyant Arsenal frontman, Freddie Lundberg. And big-serving American tennis star, Andy Roddick. But which one was poisoned by tattoos? And who blames Elton John for his injury? I think Elton would like to do, um... Uh, both. Both yeah. of them. <laughs> <laughs> and the bloke with the tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie Lundberg. Now, doesn't he advertise, um... Pants. How would you do that? 
Because I saw him on the side of a bus the other day or something. Yeah. Clinging, Clinging on in his pants. <laughs> no, if it's look at these! Look, look at them! <laughs> Martin, you done much modelling? I have done a bit of modelling in my time. What did you do? Pants. <laughs> you did pants as well? Yes. Pants for who? It was just uh, for some charity catwalk. Charity pants. pants, like Oxfam. Charity pants, yeah. What? Charity. Second hand pants. Charity pants. Martin Ophaya says, buy your pants from Healthy Aged, and he's wearing a big old pair of bloomers. Oh, no, I look good in anything, man. I bet you look good in anything. <laughs> Have you got a tattoo? Boris, you got any tattoos? Mm, not yet, no. You thinking of getting one? No, I don't know, but not yet. So well, you better make up your mind up soon. You'll be dead soon. <laughs> Um, you've got loads of tattoos. I've got loads of tattoos. When yeah. was your, uh, when, where was your first tattoo? When did you have your first one? Uh, on my arm. Yeah. And what did you have? What would I have? I had a Nike swish on my arm. A Nike, Nike swish? swish. You are joking. Yeah. Have you got Ginster's pasties tattooed on your chest? <laughs> <laughs> but footballers do. Footballers have a lot of tattoos. You got a tattoo, haven't you? Yeah, I got one. A few. Footballers have tattoos, and they often have. Um, maybe it's something to do with an injury. Maybe he had, you know, like the wrong girlfriend's name on his tattoo. <laughs> you know, because sometimes footballers <laughs> have their girlfriend's name so they can remember them. I know Wayne Rooney sometimes, he's going away, he goes, oh, this is great, Mum. And, it, and, it's, <laughs> and it should say Grandma, obviously, you know, it's a different thing. <laughs> so, yeah. come on, one of these connections, please, <laughs> Boris is too. Uh, I think Andy Roddick played in an exhibition match for the Elton John AIDS Foundation, and he hurt his back, and therefore he couldn't play at a year-end tournament called the Masters in yeah. Shanghai. That's one answer. We think that, uh, you know, Freddie Lundberg must have had a tattoo and had it infected. And a bad tattoo. Is the right answer. Wow. There you go. <laughs> yes, Freddie Lundberg missed a chunk of last season after suffering blood poisoning from the ink used in his latest tattoos. And Andy Roddick injured his back and shoulder after playing in a charity tennis match with Elton John. It's not entirely clear how Andy Roddick injured his back and shoulder playing against Elton, but it has been speculated that he strained them, desperately trying to push a heavy wardrobe against the changing room door. <laughs> Freddie wears the Arsenal number eight shirt made famous by Ian Wright. Ian's actual shirt is still in use at Highbury. It's used to dust the new Thierry Henry Arsenal's greatest ever goalscorer shrine. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that round, Boris's team has six points, Ian's team has six points. Claim to fame where the teams try to work out what height sportsmen and women have achieved just by some gentle verbal cajoling. Can we have our first mystery guest, please? Oh. <laughs> okay, this is John, he's 65 and lives in Northamptonshire. But what's his sporting claim to fame, Ian's team? John, welcome to the show. Thank you. You're from Northamptonshire, which is famous for its uh, shoe factory. That's right. Are we talking cobblers? <laughs> no, no. Is it true that you think ballroom dancing is for Nancy's? Not really, no. Do you ballroom dance yourself? No, I don't. You sure? Positive. Tango? No. Foxtrot? No. Bravo? <laughs> is it a team? Anything to do with a team sport? Uh, not really, no. No? Is it anything to do with running or anything? Running? No. Well, that's, that's, what, asking, that's not strictly true. Does your sport involve a bat? No. Any sort of uh, mammal at all? <laughs> 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 Does your sport involve an animal? Yes. We're talking some sort of horse racing, maybe. Horses. Yeah. Flat. <laughs> well, flat between the jumps. Ah, so we're talking, ah, ah, we're talking ah, National ah, Hunt. Ah, we're talking National yeah, Hunt, which yeah. is, of course, rhyming slang for Jonathan Ross. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, so it's flat. Are you uh, famous for one particular race, or have you won? Yeah. Are we talking the race of races? The, the, the crown jewel of National Hunt racing? Yeah. The Cheltenham Gold Cup? <laughs> The <laughs> uh, Grand National. Yes. You, Fred, you weren't on Escher Ness, that was too recently. So it's a famous yeah. horse. You weren't the jockey on Fornaven. Yes. It's the right answer. Yay! <laughs> yes, it's John Buckingham, jockey of 100 to 1 shot Fornaven in the 1967 Grand National. And let's have a look at John. 
and Rutherford has been hampered, and so has Castle Falls, Rockjetto has fallen, Principal has fallen, Northern has fallen, Curtin Lad has fallen, uh, the Fossa has fallen, there's a right pile up, Leedsy has uh, climbed over the fence and left his jockey there, and now with all this mayhem, Farnaven has gone off on his own, he's about 50, 100 yards in front of everything else. And at the line, John Buckingham looks over his shoulder, sees there's no danger, ears break. Ladies and gentlemen, John ball. Buckingham! <laughs> Thanks, John. Can we have our second mystery guest, please? <laughs> OK, this is Tommy. He's 62 and comes from Motherwell, but Boris's team, what's his sporting claim to fame? Tommy, from what Motherwell? Yeah. And you're only 62? Yeah. Do you wish you'd been to Specsavers? <laughs> By the way, my wife adores you. Does she? Yeah. She? I think she should have got to Specsavers. <laughs> Does your sport involve a ball? Yes. Are your balls like mine? <laughs> what, black and blue? <laughs> are they round balls or yeah. are they odd-shaped balls? Oh, round balls, yeah. Oh, you've got round balls. Tommy. Yeah. Tommy. Jonathan. <clears throat> Tommy, do you think that um, greyhound racing could be improved by putting small monkeys on the back of the dog? <laughs> With whips and the <laughs> little <laughs> Yes or no? Well, the monkeys certainly have balls, don't they? Yeah. Wouldn't that be fun, though, eh? That'd be marvellous, yeah, yeah absolutely. Tommy. Yep. Tommy. Don't keep saying Tommy, Boris is getting frightened. I'm... <laughs> Tom. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> if you were in the sport that I think you might have been way back when today, rather than back when when you did play it and not today, do you think back then you would have been earning an equivalent of money you would be earning if you were playing it today instead of playing it back then? Or do you think that the money you earned back then, rather than the money you're planning to play today, wouldn't have been anywhere near as great and indeed you wouldn't have had the advantages back then to exploit your position via such things as commercial tie-ins, advertising, so on and so forth, sponsorship, uh, sunglasses deal back then, because they probably didn't have like advertising or uh, sunglasses back then as opposed to now, when people who are in this sport, if indeed it is the sport that I think it is... Oh, shut the, the f*** up! Well, that's a perfectly valid question. If we were earning the money the players are earning today... You'd be a lot richer. Right? Rather than the money we earned when we Back then. played, actually, in those days, uh, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. Quite well. <laughs> Football, we're talking about. You've got it in one, so, yeah. Okay. Can I be one of two teams then? Really? Celtic. So you're saying Celtic. Celtic. That's good. I'm going to need some more information. No. No. Were you part of the uh, Celtic side that won the European Cup in '67? <laughs> yes, it's Tommy Gemmell, 1967 European Cup winner for Celtic, the Lisbon Lions. And let's have a look at Tommy in action. A clock to Murdoch. In comes Craig. Fantastic moment for Celtic, and how well they deserve it. There's Tommy Gemmell, the hero of Celtic. Ladies and thank you, Tommy Gemmell. Yeah, and at the end of that round, Boris's team has nine points, Ian's team has nine points. Oh, yeah. with the name game. Uh, it's a draw at the moment, so Ian's team can go first and it's Rory to do oh, the clues. Okay. And your time starts now. Uh, is there a replacement? Part Rottweiler, part Irishman? 
plays Manchester. Right, Keen. Yeah. Uh, this, this is a Pakistani cricketer. His first name is a fish that leaps out the water. A fish that salmon. Leaps, salmon. And his second is, is another but. salmon. Butt. Salmon hey. butt. He's a West Brom striker. A famous jazz pianist. Famous uh, jazz. Uh, Duke. Uh, the Duke Ellen. Yeah, no. No, for no. Old cricketer, the same name as Flintoff. First name, the same name as Flintoff. Freddy. Fred. And second, what's mm. that? What, one of those, you know? Truman. No, no, Truman. Yes. Fred Bress. No, another Fred one. Fred Titmus. Fred Titmus. Fred Titmus. Fred Titmus. A World Cup, uh, Scottish World Cup scorer. Uh, Archie Gemmell! Yeah. Yeah. Come on, that crap to me! Irishman, Irishman, midfield, basically midfield for Coventry. It's a lot of water. A lot of water. McJilton. Jim and Jill. <laughs> that is a lot of water, but also, you know, Noah, Noah had a lot of water, didn't he? In the... The Ark. The, no, it, underneath the Ark. <laughs> underneath the Ark was where the water was. It was a huge... Land place. <laughs> no, it was. What happens when it rains a lot? You get a... You puddle. Get, you get a what? A puddle. A, 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 a big puddle, Darren. A, a big, big f big puddle! <laughs> puddle. <laughs> Noah's Ark went over the... Overflow! Yeah. Oh. <laughs> And flood! Yeah! Willow flood! Willow flood! Willow flood! Forrest's team, you need uh, seven points to win. Okay. Jonathan, to give the clues. And your time starts now. All right, he's a herd lad. He's in Strictly Come Jonathan. Colin Jackson. Jackson. Colin Jackson, well done. Okay. <laughs> This is a footballer from Bayern Munich, uh, and I think he's off to Man U. Balak. If you, if you, yes, Balak, Michael Balak. 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 Okay. Give the whole name, give the whole name. Okay, First name. Oh, this is a tennis player, and he beat Federer. Um, David Bayabandia. Yes, well done. Okay. All right. He's an England rugby player. When you're a bit sulky, let's say, always have gone off in a bit of a... Moody. Don't be so moody, moody. thank you. Oh, uh, shit! Rugby player. First oh, name, like, from the professionals, Bodie and Doyle, there was played by... Lewis. Lewis, Lewis Collins, well done, thank you. Lewis Moody, no Lewis Collins. Okay, one of them. Uh, lady golfer from the US, uh, first name is the same as Radcliffe, who stopped for a window in the middle of the street. Okay, second name is... Why don't lady get excited? Oh, God. <laughs> okay, when you make milk, if you turn... If you turn... Cream. Up, cream. It turns into cream. cream. Sorry. If you make the cream, you would be a... You get very creamer. excited. Creamer, though. creamer, Paula, oh. creamer. All right. OK, this is an American golfer. If you had a magazine oh, that came out every seven days that was scary, yeah. a scary magazine, oh, that's scary. Don't make that noise, cos that's a scary noise. What's the scary noise? Oh. Not ah. Uh, that's a... That's, <laughs> no, if Ooh. someone jumps out, I make scary go, boo, boo. And if it comes out every seven days, it's... Boo Weekly. Yes, yes. Boo Weekly. <laughs> Oh. All right, this is a German person, I think a shop putter. Uh, the uh, the uh, first name is, if a lady sits on top of you with her legs apart, she yeah, sits... Yeah. Straddle. Straddle. No, on top of you, she is, you say... On you, top. She sits on top. Yeah, but she's yeah. kind of like with the legs spread. She's like, whoa, she's look at that, she's white something me. She's, she's... Uh, oh, no, 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 all right, trousers, a slang word for trousers. You say that, they're me, but also, when Pants. you walk in... Strides! Right. You yeah, <laughs> Shot putter, putter from Germany, Astrid, and the uh, second name. Kumbanus. 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 Okay, let's have a look at the final <laughs> scores. <laughs> Ian's team has 15 points, but this week's winners with 16 yeah! points. Boris's yeah! team. <laughs> Jonathan and Martin. My name's Lee Mack. Join me next week for another They Think It's All Over. Goodbye. <laughs>